Welcome to another live Saturday night Q&A with the community where me, Leon Bartrop and a whole host of community guys who are in the closed Facebook group who are live on the feed tonight going to answer your questions and queries to help you put more fish on the bank. What happens is we, it's usually about 45 minutes to an hour. We get loads of reviews and tips and edges. We ask each other questions and we just have some fun. So welcome if you're watching this on playback. And welcome to the guys who are in the house already. Can't be Steve-O, Dan Williams, Keith Oakey, Ben Wallace, Stu Unzi. Can't be Chris Dodd, Kaylee Bush, Roy Close. Loads and loads of regulars in here. Brian Mills, Dean Reeve, Dominic Carter. You're all here tonight, aren't you? Andy Hayward. Tommy Brison, Crafty Carpet 69. And a whole host of loads more just popping in now. The ticker is flying. And everyone's coming in. Good to see you guys. Good to see everyone on a Saturday night. And we're going to have some fun tonight. And we're going to try and answer some of your questions and queries to help you put more fish on the bank. So there we go. This winter, anyway. Have a little bit of a winter theme going this this live QA. I think. We're going to ask some questions about bay and uh, venues and shallow versus deep and all that sort of stuff. So we'll see how see how we go. Andy Lady says, Laura said hi. Where did you get your cool? Oh, oh blimey. Denny swims on 116 acre lake. Oh, rather you than me this time of year, mate. Hardcore. I'm good, Sean May. Ben Wallace, Leon, I'm on the bank. Not a bite. What would you do? Give up and go home in the warm. That's what I'd do, Ben. No, but honestly, um, you just got to keep on keeping on. You know, it's that time of year when them temperatures have dropped so much that the fish are in a bit of shock. They've got to get used to the cold, cold water and all the natural going out of the system. Then they will feed. I see a lot of guys give up. They get Christmas out of the way and they just don't bother going back to the lakes and that's the time that's when it can really kick on around christmas time and onwards you can start getting some bites consistently evening graham the dodge green still milsom guy john tinsley's on a cheshire mirror hope you're not too cold up there john Water temperature's 4.7. That's quite low. That is, that's getting, that's getting almost to about 4 degrees. You start getting cat ice. So really, in the last couple of weeks, it's really taken a tumble, that water temperature, hasn't it? Really has. Brian Mills got his tank thermometer this morning. It's a good bit of kit. It's a good bit of kit for two quid, isn't it, Brian? Plus, you can tell what the water temperature's doing. You know, whether you're in, it's not a question of, oh, I'm not going to fish, but it's too cold. You can sort of gauge when it's rising, when you expect it, and you can concentrate more on those bite times. Lawrence Lancaster Rain takes one bite. It certainly does, sir. Ashley Steer says, best camera. Best, best camera. It depends on your budget, really. It's all to do with the lens rather than the camera. You won't go far wrong with getting a 700D or 750D from Canon, going to cost you about 400 quid. Get a nifty 50, it's going to cost you about another 100 quid. For about four to 500 quid, you can have take perfect shots with that. The Vaping Carper says, can we have your opinion on the otter issue? The otter issue. Well, the problem is, you're not going to eradicate them. That's the thing, because if you, you imagine if you went to Tesco's and said, right, I'm going to kill all the otters because they're killing my fish. You get lynched by all the housewives in there, wouldn't you? You get lynched. You will get out of the place alive, would you? You know, it's a little furry animal. Tark of the otter, remember that? They love them. All you can do is fence off your lake. If even you're allowed to, I was speaking to someone the other day, they, they're not even allowed to fence off the lake. They're going to lose all their fish. It's a terrible state of affairs. What can you do? You know, what can you do? Because they're not going to kill them. They're not going to cull them. It's, it's an impossible situation. It really is. Steve Milton says, Leon, I'm fishing Baden Halls, 
middle pool tomorrow and half is five foot and the other half is 12 foot would you say i'd be best in the shallow end it all it all depends where the fish want to be. You know, I could say, go to 12 foot end of fish zigs. That's probably what I'd do at the moment, because it's so cold. I'd probably go the, the deeper end of fish zigs. Then again, if you get a bit of sunlight, the fish there might be a few fish up the shallow end. It's a difficult one, unless you're actually there at the lake and seeing what's going on. But I'd probably go and try and fish zigs in the 12 foot. David Yama says he's got a 760D with a 24mm prime. It's pucker. I prefer it to the nifty 50. You probably get a lot better wider angle on the 24 prime. Well, you will do. You get a lot better wider angles. You don't need to be so far away from the fish. And being a prime lens, it's going to be a lot more sharper. Kaylee Bush said, what's your opinion on the call to go? Um, I personally think it's a bit of a gimmick product. MJ Moore, a little shout out to Matilda. I hope you feel better, little darling. She's not too well. Evening, Tim P. Roy well, Close, it's been cold, but it's going to warm up a bit. How long would you wait before you go out and try and catch them? Roy, I just get out when I can get out. Like most people out there, unfortunately, I can't say, Roy, well, I'm going to wait two or three days because of work. Everyone's got work and other things. I just go and try and make the best of the conditions while I'm there. Sean Mulqueen, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Yep, Davey Alba says he loves the booker on the 2.8 aperture on a 25mm two. If you don't understand what that is, basically what that is is that the lower the number on an aperture setting, like an f-stop, they call it, it everything behind what you're focusing on, focusing on blurs out. So you get pin sharp what you're focusing on and then gradually it blurs out in the background. Can't be Steve, I said, did you know there are 190,000 black chickens in the UK? Yeah, they're normally on the lakes I'm on. What do you think I've got one of these bloody T-shirts for? Try and scare them off. Mark Beaver says, Leon, watch Crowy at Rainbow Lakes last night. Have you ever fished there? It looks a magic. It is a magical place. I fished there 10 years ago. Just, just under 10 years ago, I fished there for a week and thoroughly enjoyed it. Just haven't... At the chance or time to go back. Sean McQueen, how's the Nash heater? Well, it's the Chinese version of the Nash heater. Um, I wouldn't call it a heater. I would call it a bit of extra light in the bivy and it takes the edge off the coldness. It is in no shape or form is it a heater. See you soon, Darren. Stephen Perry says, Leon, do you think a good combo of greenlit muscle and red krill good for ground bait? Yep, definitely. Both of those, the greenlit muscle and the krill, are absolutely brilliant powders. Really good. Let's hope so, Rooster. Let's hope so. Evening, Keith Oakey. Yeah, uh, Dominic, you can use any... T whatever you're confident in using, whatever liquids, it could be something from the supermarket, it could be hemp oil, it could be fermented chilli oil, which I use as chilli extract, which I use as well. You know, liver powder, green lip muscle powder, you use banana milkshake, you can use whatever you like. I just use those specific ones because they've worked for me over the years. Wayne, I think you're probably right there. He's tried a few hitters, but best to stick to the carbon stove. I, I think you're spot on.
Hi, Graham Rowland. Good to see you in the house, mate. Mr. Font of all knowledge is there, Graham. Jay Giles says, do you have any suggestions for winter pop-ups, boosting powders, or liquids? I did a video about a week or so ago about pimping up your pop-ups. But I'll give you a couple of examples what I use. Now, if you're using like a fruity pop-up or something like that, get hold of some tallin or get hold of some um, some sweetener. Uh, get hold of some of your flavour that the boiler you're using. Mix it up in there. You put liver powder around it. That's one particular one I like. <clears throat> you can use beta stem, which is betaine. That's a really good sort of semi-sweet attractor, which is a enhancer. Um, you know, there's lots of different combos of stuff that you can use. Black chickens are having a beer. Good for you, mate. I'm having... A cup of tea, Yorkshire tea. Have I ever fished Drayton Reservoir? Ryan Bell asked. Yes, I have. I fished it about two or three times. And I fished it on the bottom and I fished it with Zeke, spotting over the top. And caught quite a few there, a few, good few years ago now. Hi, Scouse Benzo. Cider for Dominic Cart. I do like a bit of cider. Don't like beer anymore. It bloats me out. Cheers, Black Chickens. Gary Clark, good to see you, mate. It's a first timer. Good to see you in here. He's going to fishing for some cod. Yeah, Gary Clark. Lovely this time of year, getting out and getting some, trying to catch some cod. Steve Booth asks, have I ever fished a Bradshaw Hawk fishery? No, I haven't. What part of the country is it, Steve? Billy Oakley says, hi, Leon. Is the Rhino Beam okay to use with a phone camera? 100%. You can use the Rhino Beam or any beam like that with any camera. Jess Flitter, evening as well. Dan Williams says, hi, Leon. Do you use a bed chair liner underneath your bed chair or are they a waste of time? Um, it depends if you get a cold back. I don't use a bed chair liner myself. Um, I use a ground sheet and my bed chairs, you know, most people's bed chairs are about that much off the ground. Don't seem to find I get cold from underneath. It'd be coming from the side because I never zip up my sleeping bag. I have a cover over the top. Dean Reeves says he's currently blanking on Sanders, but it only takes one bite, fishing hard at the moment. What swim are you in, Dean? Darren Holmes says, where is my curry? He's been waiting over an hour. Not good, is it? Jay Jarvis says, Leon, do you do one-to-one -one tutorials? I used to, but I just don't have the time to do them anymore, Jay. Sean May says, just bought myself a TFG Force 8 Bivy. Any good? I believe they're okay, Sean. For the money, they're good. Jerome from Holland. Good to see you in here, mate. Damage Report is going off to Sanders for a day session. He's been soaking his boilies, as advised by me. So time to see what they do. Well, let's hope you have a bite. Stephen Perry says, Leon, do you have to use a green bivy when on the bank or can you use a camo tent? Use whatever you like, Stephen. Keith Oakey says, Leon, what's the lowest temperature on your thermometer that you have caught is where I am fishing. It's 4.4 at the moment at the minute. Round about to 4.1. I've actually caught as the ice. I caught Sanders last winter. I think this is my, probably my last uh, vlog on Sanders last winter when it was about 2 in the morning and I actually caught one and the ice was three quarters away across to me swim, and where my rods were positioned, where my bait was, I'd got the bite from under the ice. By the morning, it was completely frozen. In Bolton in England, Steve Booth said, Bradshaw Hall is. No, I haven't, unfortunately.
Ben Wallace has just had one, and it was a £32 black chicken. <laughs> Good for you, Ben. Dave Troyick says, received some sea monster pop-ups today off Baitworks. Oh, my God, they stink, but in a good way. They do smell, don't they? Can't be Steve-O. He's got the Latin name of the black chicken, but he prefers a different name for him. MJ Moore says, Leon, have you got your lad? Any tackle for Xmas? No, he's not interested in fishing. He wants an Xbox. Scouse Bonzo says, tips to get rid of line twists. There's a couple of things you can do. You can buy yourself a gardener twist, whatever it's called, I think. Uh, that may help. But what I do is, if, if you've got a big field or a football field or a cricket field or something, I put the lead at one end. I take the rod to the other. I walk back to the lead, cut the lead off, go back to the rod and just wind it on. And that naturally takes all the twist out. Darren Holmes says, do SSP base do bulk deals direct from them? Yes, Darren, they do. Send them an email. I'm sure they'll get you hooked up and sorted out. Evening, Phil Craig. 60 carp or evening as well. Sean Mulqueen. Good to see you, mate. Catch up with you later. Hi, oh, Leon. What do you think about krill maggots? Um, I think any sort of powders. Turmeric, krill, liver powder. Any of them I've used in maggots and caught. Cool. Spin Doctor by Garner. Cheers, Joe Brown. Can't be Steve-O says he's had a PVA bag. It's taken six minutes for the solid bag to dissolve at five degrees. Wouldn't surprise me. I don't tend to use PVA when it gets really cold. Below about six or seven degrees, I don't trust it. Bake King One. Evening to you. I'm very well, thank you. Rob Weaver says, which is best, dead or live maggots? I would say live maggots, because they're active. You know, it's like the hunting thing. Them carp will be coming in, they'll be moving about, they'll be diving on them, and they just love them when they're alive. They still eat them dead, but, you know, they're a, there's a bit of movement there. There's that, their hunter instinct comes out of them. Frank O'Connor, good to see you. Thanks for the kind words. Sean Carl says, you can also use liquids over your maggots as well. Something I don't tend to do, though. Because I don't want them to sweat up. Because what I do is I, I riddle them two or three times a day. Put whatever powder I'm using in them. And it keeps them clean. And there's no ammonia going on. If I put liquids with them. Then they're going to start to sweat. They're going to start to do all types of horrible things. Keep out. He says, Leon, he watched the video the day of carp feeding and colours, and they say that in the dark, the carp only see black and white. What's your thoughts? Um, I don't know, really, if I'm honest. I just have confidence in what I do, and I like using fluorary pop-ups and or bait, you know, dark pop-ups in the summer and things like that. Uh, it just, you know, I'm, I'm sure they can see certain different shades of grey and things like that, so... Yeah, you may well be right. Andy says, how much, how much maggots for a 24-hour session? Probably only a couple of pints. I don't use very many maggots. I don't even use them on the hook. I use little 10 mil pop-ups with a little, um, like a crest, Enterprise maggot crest on top, which has been soaked in tallin. Yeah, good old worm is a very good bait, Lawrence. I should be putting some of those in my spot mix over the next couple of days. Evening, Gildris. Good to see you. It only takes my bite. I said he had a carp on his on in his swim late or um, after thirty minutes. I reeled in and had a clump of PVA nuggets still on my hook. Doesn't surprise me. Alan Mutlow says, have you moved off the multi-rig? Uh, I've been using a hint stiffy, and I'm going to go on to a little combi rig that I use with little 10 mil pop-ups. I haven't forgotten about the multi-rig. I love the multi-rig. It's one of my favourite rigs. But I just want to get, I just want to try something a little bit different. MJ Mer says, Leo, Matilda, his daughter says, what do I keep on drinking? 
that is good old Yorkshire tea. Every carp banger should drink it or you'll never catch anything. John Liffey says, how long on the fluorocarbon leaders that I use? Normally twice the length of the rod, so about 24 foot. And what I do is, because fluorocarbon is naturally quite, quite uh, springs up like that, as I stretch it out. And I change them about every three or four weeks. Liquidized worm in the stick mix from baking. Very good little edge there. Frank O'Connor says, would you mix condensed milk and a glug of your choice for winter to soak your boilies with? Yes, condensed milk's a very... I'd put, I do tend to put that in if I'm making my chilli hemp and putting groats in. Because it suck, groats suck in all that lovely flavour. Coffee is a real man's drink. It only takes one bite. I have one coffee in the morning, otherwise I get migraines. But Yorkshire tea, come on. Come on, Yorkshire tea's the one, isn't it? It's a proper cup of tea. PG tips, get rid of that rubbish, them little monkeys jumping around everywhere. Yorkshire tea's the one. The unfit mountain bike, unfit mountain biker, good to see you here, mate, as well. Dad's always got a beer. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Paul says, see you are using groats. Do you add any extras? I do. I, um... I always make my groats with my hemp, so all that goodness in the hemp goes into it. Depends on how I'm feeling, but uh, fermented chilli extract is very good. Uh, also, you can use condensed milk. You know, you can use your imagination. Use whatever you... It makes a big cloud. And they suck in any liquids that you put in or come off from the hemp. Matthew Randall says he was on the bank yesterday and had four out on lunch of meat covered in curry powder. Spicy, eh? Twinings. Yeah, a few people said that to me, Carpo Steve. Carpy Steve, oh, twinings. I'll stick to me Yorkshire tea. Billy Oakley says, Hi, Leon, have you used bloodworms for loose bait in the winter? Only when I was a match angler on the pole. Franco O'Connor says, are you going to do a video at Farlow's Lake this winter? At some point, I'm going to get over Farlow's Lake and meet up with the obsessive carper, and we're going to have a little 24, 48-hour session. Jess Flitter says, used to drink Yorkshire tea, and then found the much better one used to be called Punjab tea. Now it's called Thompson's. I'll have to have a look at that one. Yeah, Brian Mill says condensed milk in groats is awesome. I agree, Brian, but I never use them alone. Always mix them with hemp, red band, and tears. Good little, good little spob mix that one, Brian. Darren Sartin says, "Hi, Leon. Have you ever written a book? If not, have you thought about it? I thought about it. I just haven't got the time, but I have. Uh, I've written little guest chapters in a number of books. BCSG book, um, Chris Woodrow's latest book." couple of other books I've written little guest chapters in. Alan Mutlow says, do you think it's worth doing just day sessions at the moment, staying mobile? Most definitely, Alan. Most definitely. Try and find them fish. Cast little bags or little sticks. Well, little sticks, I'd say, not bags. And, uh, you know, singles. You know, if you see a fish show, move around different lake, fish the snags, fish different different areas. You know, definitely moving about mobile. Ashley Sears says, his Park Lake has crayfish. Would they be less active in the cold? Possibly, Ashley, because they like to live in the weed and that. As the weed dies down, they won't venture out as much. Katie Bush says, Yorkshire tea always. There you go. Well, we've got 163 people in here tonight. Paul, mad, had been in the tackle box today, picked up some salmon oil, hemp oil, and some liver powder. Have you ever been to Wolverstone? Yes, I used to fish it quite a lot years and years ago on day sessions. Lee Brown says, do you know anything about Elfrix Lake? Unfortunately, I don't. I've never fished it, even though I need to live about half an hour away from it. I've never fished it. So 
how many of you guys are actually out on the bank tonight? How many of you guys are actually brave in this cold weather, hardcore, and are out on the bank? Just give me a little message just to say where you are and you're out on the bank. Evening, Jamie Bryson. <laughs> Brian Mills out for 24 hours tomorrow. Daniel Spence was at burial today. I'd hold out to myself and still blank. It happens, Daniel. Cromwell late, can't be Steve-O. Ben Wallace is going to Cromwell tomorrow. He's done 48 hours. Digger Lakes in Devon, Southwest Carp Hunter. Dean Reeves, Sanders, Isla Swim. Are you left or right hand side? United beat the Gooners 3 1. The obsessive carp just got back from a 48 hour blank. Happens to all of us, mate. Can't be Luke's at Lakeside. John Tinsey's at Ashbury, Mia, Cheshire. Hope you bag one, John. Dean Reeves in the left-hand side of the Island Swim at Sandhurst. Ian, no cop. Can't go until Wednesday. Work sucks. Work always sucks, mate. Phil Craig's out on Corley Springs, Litchfield. Ian Burton says he's stuck in a truck stop eating McDonald's. <laughs> Dean Reeves says his mate's in the right hand island at Sandhurst. 16 wraps towards swim 11, I think, Dean, in the right hand side. I should be down to Sandhurst in the morning. I'm coming for two nights. So don't catch them all, Dean. I bet you've seen fish up to your left, haven't you? We've got old Warren Clark. Even I will be out in the morning for a session on the punt. Hopefully catch one. Look at him on the punt. With his little brow on that. Good luck, mate. Evening P. Waldstar. Evening Richard Milton. Middleton, even. Wayne Norris 4 has got to go. Have a good weekend, Wayne. Thanks for popping in, mate. Mike Payne says, Evening, Neil. The army softies that I recommended arrive today very warm. You won't go far wrong with them army softies, I'm telling you. They're proper warm. Yeah, thanks for letting the football score out the bag. Yeah, I know. I was going to watch it later as well. Might be still says, did you see Danny Fairbrass on YouTube with Tackle Box? He's having a giraffe. Was it for his action man? Yeah, I didn't quite understand that thing. Like, it's an apology, you know. It just seems all a bit strange, doesn't it? Steve Booth says, do you have any pike fishing tips? No, but I should have. But if I, if I don't catch one soon, I'm going to take up pike fishing. Keith Oakey's, I am braving the cold at Wellingborough Syndicate. Been here since Friday morning. Good luck. It's a lovely little syndicate, that. I fished the day ticket lakes there a couple of times. Gray and the Dodge Green said, what's that logo icon bottom right-hand side of the screen? Ah, oh, this. Where is it? That there. Well, apparently, what that's meant to do, YouTube said, was when someone subscribes... It goes into it, but I ain't seen it bloody working. Like the top one up here is not working tonight. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Elson Lake, that's the one. Gildris. Clickbait, that's the... <laughs> Camo Copy Cootsie. He will be going live at 8 o'clock tonight. Tune in for him. He's probably in the, in the man cave. 
Adam Ridley says, trying to change the selling tactics. Definitely, Adam. They must be watching what we're doing, eh? Henry Williams, hi, mate. I'm on Pinchwood. Good for you, Henry. It's a lovely lake, that is. Terry Brown says, can you recommend a good syndicate lake to apply for in the Surrey area? Blimey. Um, no, I'm sorry, I can't. Roy Clifford says, maggots in fenugreek powder. Yep, fenugreek's a really good powder as well, guys. Can't be Steve. So what's the worst temperature you have fished in? I've fished when it's frozen. It stayed there for another day. Open it would defreeze and it did. Still blanked. Should have gone home. Daniel Spencer, so, so, sorry, it's warmer today, but the fish were still not playing ball. Why is that? I'll tell you why it is, Daniel, because two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was over 10 degrees of water temperature. Now it's down to five or six degrees. It's like a big shock to the system. They've just got to get used to it before they start feeding again properly. Evening, Darren Lindsay. <laughs> I think so, Dominic. I've actually fished that lake uh, where Terry done that video. I fished that a couple of times. Lovely lake. Frank O'Connor's going. He's going to go and try fire low lakes in a couple of weeks. Let us know you get on. Russ Barks said, I'm fishing a lake, but not very good in the winter, but do come out. Would suggest keep going at it. I tend to fish lakes in the winter time where I've got a chance of a bite. If you've got a chance of a bite over the winter on that lake, keep on keeping on, mate. It makes it even more special when you catch one. Stuart Cox says his daughter, Ariana, passed her driving test. Well done. That's a world of pain there, Stuart. That's a world of pain, I tell you. Hit the runs water, GWL78 says. I couldn't agree more. MJ Mur is the cop. Well, go out and say hello. No. He's, he won't come out for love no money at the moment. But I tell you what I bought him. Look, he's got a little coat with his name on. We got him a little coat. But it's not big enough for him underneath. It fits him, but the strap is not big enough because he's a fat little sod. So I've had to get some other tape, put it on there, so it'll fit him, little fatty. But he'd be wearing this tomorrow. Look. Look at that. Bless him, mate. Little camo with his name on it. He'd be having that on the next couple of days. He don't like it, but he's having it on. Any good lakes you could recommend in the Norfolk area? Um, not personally, but there might be some guys on here that could recommend some lakes where you get a bite this winter. Look at him and his DPM coat, eh? Yeah, you know it. Steve Booth, that's not good. Ty Road says he was so cold once that his test was frozen solid and he had to get a brute to defrost it. You shouldn't have a test there, should you, Ty Road? It must have been cold. Evening, Richard Froome. 34 minutes in, guys. We've got 195 people. Yeah, Waverley Valley Lakes might be good, Sean Castle. Yeah, good call, that one. Ben Wallace bought a camo water bottle to girls' blouse. I've got the carp dog. Del the, Ang the, the Angler says, Evening, Leo. Mrs. B. Curry tonight? No, I had... Fish, two bits of breaded fish, and some uh, sweet potato chips. Lovely. Evening, AD. How are you, mate? Top Penguin TV. You should check his channel out, Top Penguin. Does some good good vlogs all over the place. And me and him are going to meet up in the winter sometime. Aaron Paul says, don't let him out the bivvy, you won't find him. I'm hoping that coat, will I? Russ Barks is looking for some cheap three and a half Tesco rods. What would you suggest? 
Uh, check out Shim is it Shimano Velocities. They're pretty good, I believe. Um, there must be some other ones about as well. Well, that's me brew gone. That's not good, is it? I should have a little tea maker here, really. Yeah, his singing was... Mark Beavers, I'm feeling your pain, mate. His singing that he put out on his Facebook page, AD, Top Penguin, was just wrong. Wrong. I need counselling after that. Groovin' Cat, good to see you, mate. All the way from America. Barney's going commando. Most definitely, Sean. Sonic Rods are good as well. Baking One suggests. So what, have got, what do you guys reckon, right? Shallow lakes in winter or deep lakes in winter? Would you reckon, in your experiences, what have you found to be the best lake, shallow lake in winter or deep lake in winter? And I'll tell you why. I found up until about December, January, the deep lakes, they, they haven't cooled down as much, so they fish all right. After the, the shallow lakes tend to shut up shop a little bit till after Christmas when it's all levelled out. So you get a sunny day and the fish feed, or you get a little bit of a southwesterly, the shallower lakes you get you get bites. But what's your thoughts? Greggy Carpenter says deep. Ben Wallace says deep. Dominic Carter says shallow. Camo says deep lakes, not freezing as much. Six footish for winter, Brian Mills. Shallow lakes, the only takes one bite. Shallow under five foot, Graham Rowland. I must admit, I prefer shallow lakes myself. Deep. Carp of Steve-O, Aaron Paul, Shallow, Silty, right, yeah, always fish the silt spots in winter. Hannes Vermack, hi from South Africa. Good to see you here, Hannes. Good to have someone from over the other side of the world join the community we've got on here on the live Q&A. Billy Oak, this is Shallow Lakes. Only takes one bite, says two metres deep at most. Kate... Keane Watson. Keane Watson? What are you doing on here? Says Shallow. That's Simon, really, isn't it? It's not Keane. It's Simon. Lakes with carp in it. Carpy Steve, I'm hearing you, brother. I'm hearing you. Doesn't matter how deep it is, as long as you've got fish in it. Robert Capewell says Shallow. Any lake, as long as the bait keeps going in. Macro says, yep. Yeah, I'm hearing that. Ian no Cup, Burke, Castle Fisheries, Norfolk. There's one for you, whoever was asking earlier on. Andrew Crossy says, do plum boilies work in winter? I don't think it's so much the flavour. I think it's the makeup of the bait, whether it's digestible. Shallow, Jason Sooty Allen says. Paul Bever says, fish in the reservoir and shrops your deepest nine foot to five fish so far this winter. There you go. So little, that's sort of in between, I think, from shallow and deep. Keane, Keane, it's you, it's not Simon. Bloody it, was he looking after your lovely little daughter? Well, it's good to see you, Keane, on here. Tommy Tucker, three, oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't think the Hammers are going to beat City tomorrow. No chance, Tommy. What's my favourite bank food the winner? I, I tell you what I like. I like one of Mrs. B's favourite curries. They fill you up. A couple of naan breads. Lovely. You're sorted for the night. A couple of cups of tea. Keane. That's the one. Derek Smith, good to see you. Steve Jarman, good to see you, mate. Thanks for popping in. Paul Pard, good to see you, mate. Good choice, Carney, yep. Yeah? Good choice. Sam Davis, how you doing? Thanks for popping in. So I take it people prefer to fish day ticket lakes, runs waters in the winter, rather than carry on keeping on on your difficult lakes, which I can totally understand. I've done many years on hard lakes, blanking my ass off, not catching nothing. Now I tend to fish a day ticket lake or somewhere I know I've got a chance for a bite in the colder months. 
Simon Wald says, what spud rod marker rod to use? I don't use a marker rod. Spud rod, I think it's the Fox Horizon XT that I've got. I've had it for years. No problem, Camo. Definitely runs what in, in winter, Gildress says. Stephen Davies, good to see you, mate. Got him in carpet, says he's got a work party tomorrow. Then he's fishing. Happy days indeed. Mace387, evening, Leon, tuning in from Denmark. Good to see you here. Do you know what, guys? We get people from all over the world on these live streams interacting, asking questions. It's brilliant, isn't it? And what we've got here, what we're doing, these live streams and videos, is just a lovely, great community. And the Close Facebook group. Guys, if you haven't been in the Close Facebook group yet, or haven't applied to get in, we've got over 2,000 people in there now. Do a search, go to your Facebook page and do a search on It Only Takes One Bite, all one word. Ask to come in. We'll let you in. Unless you're a wrong one, then we won't let you in. And... You've got loads of reviews and people posting stuff and pictures and videos and reviews and people asking questions and getting normal answers. There's no egos in there. This It's just a really lovely Facebook group. Get yourself in there. You'll be amazed how good it is. Brad Essetis, how's the park? They've been fishing terrible. Terrible. In time, I'm going to Sandhurst tomorrow. See if I can get a bite. But that's not fishing very well. No one's fishing very well at the moment. Certainly is, Graham. Graham says it's a great community. Sean Castle says great community. That's because you guys make it a great community. Ah, uh, Dominic, I don't know. Danny Fairbrass, I don't know if he would, you know. He's got he's got too much money anyway. He don't care. Got him in carp, says Leon, do you know the late for Chili? I saw him last weekend at the carp show, moving about with his missus. Um, I, I, he's not someone I speak to on a regular basis, so I couldn't tell you, but it was nice to see him out. Del Yang says, how's the new barra? Yes, the triporter. I'm liking it so far. I have stacked it a couple of times on my own fault, though, going up an incline, left it, and it stacked it. So I'm surprised I haven't broke my rods. Mark Beaver says, money's not everything. No, it certainly isn't. Good for you, Brad. Bacon One says, what stand am I on at the Northern Show? I will be on the Summit Tackle Stand at the Northern Show. And at the Brentwood Show if you're around. And Zwolla. And I will be at the Angelsport Angel Heridian in Germany in March as well. I should be there at that show. Grand the Dodge Green says, what's been your worst fishing experience this year, mate? Uh, my worst fishing experience this year, I'll tell you what it was. I caught a lovely fish. Not a big fish. I, it was a linear, about 22 pound. Uh... Put, it's actually on one of my videos. If you see my video about float fishing, it's a lovely, lovely fish from the lake up in Peterborough. Got home, I was talking to someone. I, they said, what have you had? I had and I texted them a picture of the fish, and they said they just pulled it out dead. And if you see on the video, I treat you with respect. I always treat all the fish I catch with respect. Put it back, make sure it went, it went back strong. Always clinic them up. You know, I just look after them. You know, I look after them. Because they're our future, these fish. And for that fish to die the following day, I was absolutely gutted. I still think about it now. But speaking to lots of people, it's like there's nothing I could have done. I didn't mistreat. If I dropped it or something had happened, I can see the reason why. But it, I, I, don't, I can't put a, I don't know why it died. But it died and I felt really bad about it. Gutted, really gutted. So that's the worst experience I've had this year and probably for very many years. Derek Smith loves the spoon of death. 
Sam Davis says, what's the best head torch to get one that is bright? Uh, I use one. It's about a tenner off, off eBay. I'll try and put a link up at some point. Uh, it's mega bright. Dean Willard says, the small summit pod looks nice. Yes, it's, that looks really nice. The low profile one, really nice. I don't like pods, personally. But that one, I'm actually using that tomorrow. So I'm going to be using that because it just looks... With me three rod mini buzz bars fixed. Lovely. I'm going to give it a little test out. Katie Bush says, see you, Leon. Me and Dan B. Have a good one. And you too. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Brian Mills said, did that fish fight hard, Leon? Yes, Brian, it did. It fought very hard. Very hard indeed. Robert Mickey. Robert McIntosh says, hi, mate. I watch your videos with me, lad. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate every one of your views. Everyone that watches my stuff, I appreciate it. You're taking time out from your busy day, busy lifestyle to watch what I'm doing. You know, I appreciate your comments, good or bad. It's what it's about. It's real fishing. Appreciate you guys. Commas are sometimes mixed up, so it might not be the same kipper. No, Graham, it was a, a linear. It was a linear one, the one I lost, the one that died. It's definitely a sad story, Paul. Yeah, it's just first time it's ever happened to me. First time ever. Went back fine, just the next day. I didn't believe it. I went, show me a picture. And he showed me a picture, they pulled it out. And it was exactly the same fish. Um, I just, you know, I was gutted, absolutely gutted. Last thing someone wants to hear that the fish you caught the day before has turned up dead the next day. Terrible. Kevin Marshall says he loves the channel, but he's missing Strictly. There you go. I can't say anything about that, can I? Aaron Paul, I always have my handles folded. Always. Old school. <laughs> Thanks, Dan, Dean Reeve. Off now. Hope, hope you catch something at Sanders. And I might even see you in the morning. Scouse Bonders says, how do you get two days gear on a barrel in one trip? I just refine everything down. I look for bits of kit which can fit in places and things like that. You know, I'd love to take more kit, but... Where does it end, you know? Tony da Kunha says, love the live chat and all the useful, useful info. Thanks. No, it's a pleasure to have you here. You know, it's a pleasure for you guys to come onto me live feed. And near we get to Christmas, I'm going to have a special live feed where if you're a subscriber to my channel, so if you haven't subscribed already, go back to the channel, hit the subscribe button, I'm going to be giving away some black hoodie t-shirts and hoodies and cups and loads of other stuff to celebrate Christmas. You know, it was a giveaway to a thanks to you guys for getting me over at the moment, over 7,500 subscribers. You know, it's just for you. It's to another give something back to you, you know, with the stuff that I, I sell. So, you know, look out for that nearer Christmas when we do a live feed near Christmas, and I'll probably do five, six, or seven, or eight, or ten prizes, giveaways again, to the subscribers, like I did when we hit 5,000 subscribers, remember? As so a thank you, and a happy Christmas to you as well. Colgie says, you don't need any kit the way you blow out your baritars, I know. I could, Dominic Carr says, you should get the car to <coughs> cope with pockets. You could have him as a pack mule for extra equipment. Yeah, I'll make you right. John Carlson says, oh, the new style warm hood is coming out. Right, Sean, I'll tell you what's happened now. It's these ones. Now, I like these ones and I like the other ones. The other ones are 280 weight, 280 GSM, whatever that means, weight. These ones are 320, so it's only about a 10% difference, you know, to, and they're about a five or extra. So I thought, I don't think I'm going to bring them out because this, they're lovely hoodies, just like the other ones lovely hoodies, but for an extra fiver, 
and it's only 10% more material. So, you know, it's not a warmer hoodie. It's not a heavier gauge hoodie, really. So that's the reason I haven't brought them out. It just wouldn't be fair, would it? Robert McIntosh says, don't know if I missed it, but have you got the tripod? Yes, I have the Mark II, and I'm thinking of buying the conversion kit, would you say? Robert, in about three videos time, two or three videos time, I'll give you a full rundown of the tripod. It's in one of my vlogs. Oh, Nancy Turner's turned up. Look. Fine hot baby. Check up my profile. I think Nancy Turner will be going away, don't you? Over that or over that or I'll, uh, I'll message her privately, eh? What do you reckon? I think Nancy Turner's see ya. Won't want to be ya. One of them, innit? Get your baps out, Nancy. Brian Mills, you old bastard. There's no control in you, Brian, is there? Roy Close says, Swinger indicators or chain style? I prefer chain style, Roy. Derek Smith said he loves Nancy. I see they are back. Don't you just love her, mate? I want to see some rude pictures from him. Oh, can't see him. What, you, Brian? Yes, you, Brian. It's always you. You're the first on the keyboard. As soon as one of them birds come on it, you're like, oi, 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 darling, you're on it before anyone else. you got like a little radar. Simon Ellsmore, you're close second to Brian. Kev Spence, hi, Leo, Mrs. B. Well, Mrs. B knows what I'm like. Frank O'Connor says, Leon, how do you convince your parents to buy you two more reels? That's a difficult one, isn't it? Say so you need them. You need them. <laughs> Got to be done, mate, Brian. <laughs> There's nothing wrong, and I love it. Colin Osborne says, Nancy's probably 70 and no teeth. What's wrong with that, Colin? Don't make her a bad person. <laughs> Paul Pond, get in there, Brian. Yeah, Brian's wrong, isn't he? Nah, Brian's normal. <laughs> and I might have some news next week about the social come sort of teaching thing going on in the summer. I had, listen to this, guys. Right, I did book it. I booked the dates, which were the 24th, 25th, I think, of June next year. We we're going to have a barbecue and everything, have a fishing. And me and two other guys are going to walk around and help you and, you know, talk about everything, fishing and all that sort of stuff. It's going to cost about 200 quid. I pre booked the lake, going to pay a deposit, all sorted. Unfortunately, the dates that I was given are the wrong dates because they've already booked them and didn't put them down in the book. So I've got to find another date around about June time. So bear with me and I'll give you full date details. In the next couple of weeks, uh, and we'll get something rocking for uh, next summer. Dominic Carter, there's a good idea, Dominic. You could do the heavy hood of those giveaways. They'd be kind of, yeah, good idea. I might well do that, Dominic. I might put them on the website anyway and do some giveaways with them, at least one or two of them anyway. Keith Oakey, what's going on? Jason Sooty Allen, Danny's Nick, he bloody might well have done, I tell you. He might well have done. Adam Hollins, the solar titanium bobbins, very nice bobbins. Very nice bobbins, they are. Mark Beavers, yeah, I bet Brian can. MJ Mercer's Leo thinking of getting some Summit Bank Sticks for my Solar Pod to beef it up. Will it work? Yes, they will fit the Solar Pod. And the truth be known, Summit actually make the Solar Pod for Summit. You're a medium, Dominic Carter, are you? I'll just make a little note that you won't be winning nothing. 
<laughs> Ryan Morley, good to see you, mate. Nancy could well be there. Nancy could well be there. Let's hope so, anyway. I catch how you doing, mate. Stuart Unzi, good to see you. In winter, do you scale down your hooks and baits? Uh, sometimes I do. Not hook size, but bait size I might do. It's like tomorrow when I'm fishing, I'm going to go a little 12 mil pop-ups instead of 14 or 15 mil pop-ups rather than the double baits so I've been using a couple of weeks ago. Just, uh, you know, no is fish at the moment. So I'm going to scale down a little bit just the hook bait size, not the actual size of the hook. Ben Stevens, good to see you. Thomas Henry Meyer says, any news on the Summit Bobbins? I've seen the drawings, and I've sort of had a little bit of input into them. They're lovely, but they're not going to start making them because they're so busy with other stuff till probably next January or February. The gun hurt, hurt one. How much spawning weight do you think the 83-pound carp was carrying, and would it have been broke the record if it hadn't been spawned bad? I tell you what's happened there, Steve, is that fish had a kid has got a kidney problem. So it's water retention. It's not just spawn, it might be no spawn. That is water retention. It's got a kidney problem with its kidneys. That's not spawn, believe me. That is a medical problem with the fish. That fish will die eventually. Adam Holland says, you ordered one of them Chinese heaters. Yes, I've ordered one. Should be in the next few weeks. Um, and I'll let you know I'll get along with it. Mark Beaver says, Leo, do you put anything on your hooks once you have sharp them as they rusty? Yes, I use little black, the black pens on the black or green pens to do the points. Keeps the rust away. I should be going to the Northern England show, Mike Payne. No, Mike. Look, I was at the the Sandown show. I uh, probably had about 40 or 50 people over the weekend come up, want to talk about fishing. Brilliant. Everyone's more than welcome. I'm just a normal guy like you guys. Come up, have a chat, talk to me. Not a problem at all. Paul Lewis, Lewis says, Leon, off on a guest session on the Cheshire Mere, four to five foot deep. Any tips, please? Quiet, silty bottom thing. I would tend to fish, Paul, uh, helicopter-style rigs. Put the bead up about a foot or two. M about a foot, I reckon. Um, yeah, just probably about a foot, just under. Fish long nylon hook links or braided hook links. Uh, fish a bottom bait or a little pop-up so it just sinks. When's Mrs. B opening a calf? Uh, ben Stevens says. I don't know. I did say it to her. Mike Payne, it'd be a pleasure to see you, mate, at the Northern England show. Mark Beaver says, the Jag ones or normal Michael Pence? I think um, I've got the Jag ones and I've got some other ones, but I think they're just waterproof pens. I think you get them off eBay. Must be out of, you know, indelible markers. I'm sure that's what they are. Darren Wilkinson says, how about running a competition for pride? Is I best carp dog pick, best black chicken pick? I will be, you don't have to enter. All you got to be is a subscriber. And nearer Christmas, I will be doing a giveaway, a special Christmas giveaway for you, the subscribers of the hoodies and the mugs. Like I did for the 5,000 giveaway, where I give about 10, 10 bits of merchandise away. You know, as a thank you to you guys. That's the, key folk, that's the one I use, the pinpoint pens. That's the ones I use. Vaseline also, Brad Assetier on, on the Sharp and Hook Points, works very well. Curry chickpeas, a great bait in winter, Sean Castle says. Stu he says, be great to get a big social for us, only takes one bite. Yes, I'm in the process of organising it, Stu, for about June next year sometime. More details to follow. Yep, I use the pinpoint pens, Adam. But the Jag ones, I think they're the same. 
Marty Deathridge said, do you think the fish could smell the chemicals in the pen, put the fish off? No, nope, I've had no problems with them putting the fish off. Uh, I think with them pens, they have an odour, then the odour goes as soon as it dries. And I think that's just the alcohol on them. And the alcohol evaporates, doesn't it? No problem, Stu. Gordon Bean Carp says, Leo, I never thought about visiting some tackle shops for meat and tips or advice. It's quite possible to do in the future. Sam Davis, no problem. Thanks for popping in. Well, guys, we'll be going for an hour. And I'm afraid we're going to have to call it a day soon because I've got to go and watch a bit of telly and chill out with all this excitement tonight. But don't forget, if you want one of my hoodies or the mugs or T-shirts, which helps fund everything I do for you guys, which is a pleasure having you here, go to www.leoncarper.com. If you want to join the Facebook group, do a search on Facebook for It Only Takes One Bite. Get yourself in there. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon, and you'll be noted every time I release a video or we go live. I should be going to Sanders tomorrow for a couple of nights. Tuesday night will be live from the bank. And Monday is the first of the Winter Series Vlogs. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for turning up, guys. Thanks for taking time out of your busy weekend to join the community. Really appreciate all your comments and you taking the time to watch the videos and be part of the live stream on a Saturday and a Tuesday. Right, guys, without further ado, have a great weekend. If you're out in the bank, I hope you catch one. If not, just keep on keeping on and it will come. And I'll see you soon, guys, and I'll see you for the next video.